China bans Japan's imports. What's next to Japan? China's decision to ban imports from Japan has sent shockwaves through the global economy. In this video, we explore the far-reaching consequences of this move, from its impact on Japan's economy to its potential to escalate tensions between the two nations. Join us as we analyze the implications and discuss what the future holds for Japan. Hey there, comrades in curiosity. Welcome back to the show where we unpack the weird, wild, and often worrying realities shaping our world. Buckle up, buttercups, because today we're diving headfirst into the turbulent waters of international trade. Specifically, the big splashy headline, China just slammed the door on a whole bunch of stuff coming in from Japan, think of it like this. Imagine rocking up to your favorite all-you-can-eat sushi buffet, only to find a giant neon sign flashing closed right in your face. Disappointing? Sure, a major buzzkill? Absolutely. Uh, but for Japan, this isn't just about missing out on some spicy tuna rolls. The impact of the current situation goes far beyond the culinary delights that Japan is famous for. It's about the very fabric of their society and economy. Welcome to Revo, now your go-to channel for all things revolutionary. At Revo Now, we are passionate about exploring the innovations, breakthroughs, and game-changing ideas that are shaping the world today. Our mission is to bring you the latest and most impactful advancements in technology, science, culture, business, and beyond, all in one place. Please subscribe, like, and share our videos. Imagine walking through a bustling sushi restaurant, the clatter of plates, the hum of conversation, and the delicate artistry of the chefs. Now imagine that scene slowly fading away, the vibrancy dimming as economic pressures mount. The sushi rolls are just the tip of the iceberg. This is about their economy, their global standing, and frankly their future, the towering skyscrapers of. Tokyo, the heart of Japan's business district, symbolized the nation's economic prowess. The Japanese flag fluttering in the wind represents a country that has long been a global player. But beneath this facade of strength lies a complex web of economic dependencies and vulnerabilities. Japan's economy is intricately linked to its trade relationships and any disruption can send ripples through the entire system. The stakes are incredibly high and the future is uncertain. See, China's been a massive customer for Japanese goods, cars, electronics, you name it. The assembly lines in Japanese car factories, the bustling electronic stores, and the cutting-edge technology that Japan is known for all rely heavily on exports to China. These industries are the lifeblood of Japan's economy, providing jobs and driving innovation. When China sneezes, Japan catches a cold. The symbiotic relationship between these two economic giants means that any tension or disruption can have far-reaching consequences. It's a delicate balance, and right now, it's teetering on the edge. But recent tensions, political rumblings, and let's be honest, a good old-fashioned power. Struggle have thrown a wrench into the whole operation. Political protests in Japan, heated debates in the parliament, and tense meetings between Chinese and Japanese officials paint a picture of a relationship in turmoil. The power struggle isn't just about economics, it's about influence, control, and national pride. Both countries are vying for dominance in the region, and the stakes couldn't be higher. The political landscape is shifting, and with it, the economic stability that both nations have come to rely on. It's like those two buddies who start a band become international superstars, then have a very public and very messy breakup. The camaraderie that once fueled their success turns into rivalry, and the harmony that created beautiful music is replaced by discord. The public argument isn't just a spectacle, it's a sign of deeper issues. The fans, or in this case the global economy, are left to deal with the fallout. The breakup affects everyone, from the band members to the fans. And the same is true for the economic relationship between Japan and China. The world is watching, and the consequences are far-reaching. Everyone picks sides, the music stops, and suddenly you're left wondering what hit you. The stock market crashes, confusion spreads among the populace, and factories that once buzzed with activity now stand eerily silent. The economic impact is immediate and profound. Investors pull out, businesses struggle to stay afloat, and the average citizen feels the pinch. The once driving economy is now in a state of uncertainty, and the path to recovery is unclear. The music has stopped, and the silence is deafening. 
The question now is how will Japan navigate this challenging landscape and find a way to restore harmony and stability? Well, if you're Japan, you dust yourself off, put on your best go-getter attitude, and start scouting for new gigs. Think of it as the economic equivalent of joining Tinder. Except instead of swiping right on potential dates, Japan's out there looking for new markets to woo with their high-tech exports. Now I know what you're thinking. Hold on, Rivo, now, isn't this a tad dramatic? Can't Japan just sell their stuff elsewhere? And the answer is, sort of, finding new buyers takes time, negotiation, and let's face it, a whole lot of awkward first dates. Plus, China's ban has thrown a big old question mark over the global economy. This move has sent ripples across various sectors, from technology to manufacturing and even agriculture. The interconnected nature of today's global economy means that a decision made in Beijing can have far-reaching consequences, affecting markets and industries thousands of miles away. The uncertainty is palpable, and it's not just confined to boardrooms and trading floors. Everyday people are feeling the impact too, as prices for goods fluctuate and supply chains face unprecedented disruptions. Businesses are nervous, investors are jittery, and everyone's waiting to see who blinks first in this high-stakes staring contest. The stakes are incredibly high, with billions of dollars on the line and the livelihoods of countless individuals hanging in balance. Companies are scrambling to reassess their strategies, looking for ways to mitigate risks and navigate this new landscape. Investors, on the other hand, are glued to their screens. Analyzing every piece of news and market movement, trying to predict the next big shift. In boardrooms around the world, discussions are intense and often heated as leaders grapple with the complexities of this evolving situation. It's like watching a game of economic chicken, except the cars are loaded with microchips and nobody's wearing a seatbelt. The tech industry in particular is feeling the heat. Microchips are the backbone of modern technology powering everything from smartphones to cars. With supply chains disrupted, production lines are grinding to a halt and companies are facing delays and shortages. This has a cascading effect, impacting not just tech companies but also industries that rely on these components. The automotive sector, for instance, is experiencing significant slowdowns with assembly lines sitting idle and workers facing uncertainty about their jobs. So, where do we go from here? Honestly, folks, your guess is as good as mine. Economists and analysts are working overtime trying to make sense of the data and forecast what might happen next. But the truth is, we're in uncharted territory. The global economy has never faced a situation quite like this, and the usual models and predictions may not apply. Businesses are trying to stay agile, adapting to new information as it comes in and making decisions on the fly. It's a time of great uncertainty and everyone is looking for answers, but clear solutions are hard to come by. But one thing's for sure, this situation is far from over. Trade negotiations are ongoing, with diplomats and leaders working tirelessly to find common ground and resolve the issues at hand. Meanwhile, public sentiment is growing increasingly restless, with protests and demonstrations becoming more frequent. People are demanding action and accountability, and the pressure is mounting on governments and corporations alike. The stock market, a barometer of economic health, is on a roller coaster ride, with wild swings and volatility becoming the norm. Investors are bracing for more. Turbulence, and the road ahead looks anything but smooth. It's a tangled web of politics, economics, and maybe even a dash of good old fashioned pride. Political leaders are navigating a complex landscape, balancing national interests with global responsibilities. Economic summits and meetings are becoming more frequent as leaders seek to collaborate and find solutions. But the path forward is fraught with challenges, and the interplay of politics and economics adds layers of complexity. Pride and national interests often come into play, making negotiations even more difficult. In the end, the resolution of this situation will require cooperation, compromise, and a willingness to look beyond short-term gains for the greater good. Now, before we wrap up this economic roller coaster ride, I want to hear from you. We've covered a lot of ground today, from the intricate dynamics of the China-Japan standoff to the broader implications for the global economy. It's been a whirlwind of information, and I'm sure you have your own thoughts and opinions on the matter. What do you think about this whole China-Japan standoff? Do you believe that Japan's decision to diversify its economic partnerships is a strategic move to safeguard its future, or do you think it's a risky gamble that could backfire?
Perhaps you have insights into how this standoff might affect other countries, or maybe you have a unique perspective on the historical context that has led to this point. Is Japan right to diversify, or are they playing a risky game? The stakes are high and the outcomes are uncertain. Diversification can be a double-edged sword. While it can provide a safety net, it can also spread resources thin and create new vulnerabilities. On the other hand, sticking to a single economic partner can be equally perilous, especially in a world where geopolitical tensions are constantly shifting. What do you think is the best course of action for Japan? And how do you see China's role evolving in this scenario? Hit us up in the comments with your thoughts, predictions, and maybe even some haiku about international trade if you're feeling. Oh, poetic. Your input is invaluable and we love hearing from our viewers. Whether you're an economist, a student, or just someone with a keen interest in global affairs, your perspective adds depth to the conversation. Share your analysis, your concerns, and your hopes for the future. And if you have any creative takes like a haiku or a short poem, don't hesitate to share those as well. After all, sometimes the most complex issues can be distilled into a few poignant lines. And hey, while you're at it, let us know what other global head scratches you'd like us to tackle next. The world is full of fascinating and perplexing issues, and we're here to explore them with you. Whether it's another economic dilemma, a political conundrum, or a social phenomenon, we're eager to dive in and uncover the layers of complexity. Your suggestions help guide our content, ensuring that we're addressing the topics that matter most to you. So, don't be shy. Drop us a line and let us know what's on your mind. Until next time, stay curious, stay informed, and for the love of all that is holy, stay away from any economic staring contests. The world of economics is as unpredictable as it is fascinating, and while it's important to stay engaged and informed, it's also crucial to maintain a sense of humor and perspective. Remember, the goal is to understand and navigate these complexities, not to get lost in them. So keep asking questions, keep seeking answers, and above all, keep your curiosity alive. We'll be here, ready to explore the next big issue with you. Thank you for joining us, and we'll see you in the next episode. Subscribe to Revo now and join our vibrant community of forward thinkers, change makers, and revolutionaries.